Good morning. Happy Friday. Hello, everybody. It is Friday, February 10th, 2023. So good to see you here. Kelly, sorry, you have to be part of the replay crew because you got called into a meeting. Thank you. <laughs> How is everybody? Have you had a good week? It has been a weird week for me. Sometimes it's just like that, isn't it? Cold in Albuquerque, huh, Judy? Ugh. It's cold here, too. <laughs> but it's Kansas, so that's kind of Kansas in February. So that's what I expect. It is sunny today. Anita says it's sunny. Hello, Susie. So good to see you guys here this morning. I did put a poll up in... Nope. For me, I don't know where it is for you on your screen. <laughs> um... Asking if you make five by seven cards. We are going to do five by seven cards today. However, everything I'm doing could be done on a on a regular A2 size. I just thought it would be fun. I had some picket fence products that were a little bit bigger, um, some backgrounds, some stencils and things, and I thought, why not? Let's give it a try. Plus, I had some fun um, five by seven envelopes, A7 envelopes from Simon Says Stamp. So we'll go ahead and customize those as well. Oh, it's so good to see everybody coming in. Yes, I Amber, I think it's been a long week too. I've been a little out of sorts. Does that ever happen to you guys? And there's no real reason. Nothing is going on. I'm just a little out of sorts. It's so weird. So, hello. Hello, everybody. Oh, thank you so much, Wilma. That's so sweet of you. Sunny California, Lori says, oh, I wish I could go for some warmth. I am ready when I walk outside, like I open the door to let the boys out, the dogs outside to just be like, you know, enjoying the warmth instead of being like, oh, you guys go. I'm going to come back in the house. <laughs> oh, I'm just ready for it to warm up. Good morning. Hello from Dallas, Texas. I love seeing where everybody's coming in from. Hello, hello. Um, so take part in the poll. Uh, oh, we do have some people who have said that they make five by seven most of the time. So that's where I was going with what I was talking about five by seven. Um, on YouTube, it's been a little while ago. I had asked, do you make, uh, or I guess I didn't ask, but I had some, some followers say that they make five by seven cards most of the time. And I thought that is really interesting. And so I really want to try to do a few more of those on my channel. I do love the bigger real estate if you have some bigger dies. I know several companies that we all love do make some things that really um, need a bigger, a bigger card base, a much more real estate to work with. So it's kind of fun to create them once in a while. But I know a lot of you also like making them most of the time. So that's cool too. Um, I just try to do a variety of things here. We are going to play with paper glazes from Picket Fence Studio again because I love them. But uh, yes, let's see. Molly says Kansas weather has been all over the place. Yes, it started in the 60s and then dropped to the 30s, 40s and now going back up. Molly, that's how I felt. It was kind of nice the other day. Like I was outside I with the boys. We walked all over the yard. We kind of cleaned up some stuff outside. It was really, really pretty and I was getting the spring vibes which I have them. I, I want spring to be here. Um, and then yesterday I was like, why is it so cold? Ethan and I went somewhere and he's like, oh my gosh, it's cold. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, 15 degrees in Rhode Island last week and today it's 55. The poor daffodils are confused. Yes, that is not good. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so good to see everybody coming in from all over the place. <laughs> disturbance in the four shaman said oh my god that's so funny <laughs> oh that's hilarious um as always thank you guys for being here replay crew i love you guys thank you guys so much for being a part of the replay crew uh for watching this video even after the live is over i appreciate you all so much as you know i know this is my spiel all the time but please like please subscribe we are we are inching closer and closer to that 100,000 and I am going to do a really big party. There's gonna be some really good giveaways. <laughs> um, so please like and subscribe if you haven't, you know, subscribed already. Those things all help 
in the weird algorithm that is YouTube. I don't understand it, but thank you guys. And thank you for the thumbs up. Thanks for the likes, everyone. Okay, let's go ahead. We have a lot of stenciling, a lot of dry time today. I did do quite a bit ahead of time, so where we can kind of move things in and out of the screen, <laughs> move things in and out, uh, so we don't have to wait like we did last week. However, there is a lot of that um, because that's kind of how sometimes I like to create. Sometimes I don't want to color. Sometimes I want to do fast color with sprays and inks and all of that good stuff. Oh, yeah, Sophie, my car needs to go to the car wash too really bad. In fact, I probably should go today because I think it's pretty nice. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Chrislyn says, same in Atlanta, snow on Sunday. Yes. It's, it's just that time of year, isn't it? Absolutely. And then in the spring when we have like, at least here in the Midwest, when we have violent weather and thunderstorms, we'll be like, oh, let's go back. <laughs> no, I don't think we will. <laughs> okay, I'm going to flip my camera around. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, um, Shanna. Thank you. This is the first time I've worn this top, actually. I kind of forgot I bought it. Okay, here's a funny story. I'm going to go back to here. So here's our cards. I sometimes, not always, but I found that I matched kind of my project today. So I'm working with blues, so I dressed in blue. That wasn't really on purpose. I just thought it was funny when I was doing my Instagram, <laughs> and I noticed I matched. Um, let's see. Donna says, good morning from the Pacific Northwest. Catching live. Yay. Typically part of replay. Yes, probably, because it's probably a little early for you. Oh, but her phone alerted her. Hey, I love it when the phones alert you. Okay, I will mention I have not attached these to my card bases yet. Um, I don't know why, really. So after we're done, I'm going to have a lot of cards to attach to card bases, but that's totally fine. These are the five by seven cards I'm making. And what I want to tell you, if you are more of an A2 card maker, just remove some things. This butterfly is still going to work, portrait or landscape. I would probably not use this. Um, actually, the, there's other dies out there. I would use like a single word, and it's all going to fit, because kind of imagine it more, you know, like here. Um, so you can do a lot of the same things. Just maybe take bits and parts from this. Hopefully it just inspires you or makes you look at things a little bit different. Uh, yeah, Judy, thank you. I have to say, I have not used tons of Picket Fence products, um, but they sent me these butterflies, and I love them. And then I kind of got to looking at some other, st at some basics and things, and there are a lot of really fun things. So I just kind of threw together a bunch of stuff for these today. And I also, as much as I love pink and red, I'm a little over it, so we. I went completely uh, off on a different colorway, I guess, if you will. I will say these are the colors of paper glazes you're going to see in today's cards. Um, this is Arctic Fox, which or no, Spanish Moss. Oh, gosh, I think I put the wrong color in the supply list. Oopsies. I'll fix that later. Hi, Shari. You've only made a 5 by 7 once. <laughs> Yeah, I don't do them very often, but these were super easy. I think if you have stuff scaled for 5 by 7 like the butterflies are big, the greeting is big, it makes it a little easier. Okay, I put the wrong color in the supply list. I'm so sorry. I just noticed that. So Spanish moss. We're also going to use the coffee beans, which is going to be this color here. It has a little bit of glitter in it which I really, really love. The Spanish Moss is gonna be this one here. And then this is Huckleberry Blue, which is going to be like our backgrounds. So I love them. Okay, and I do want to mention this because I think I mentioned this last week. Something I've noticed about the Picket Fence glazes and glitzes, um, or I don't think they're called glitz, but the paper glazes, I have not found that they dry out as quick as maybe some others. So um, I don't know what that is. I have nothing else to base it on other than just using a lot of these different products. And I can come back to these weeks and months later and they're still good, which to me is fantastic. And the colors are amazing. 
Um, I'm going to pick up some more colors because I love them. Yes, Karen has a great point. She said you could also just cut off the word there and use hello to make this work for an A2 card. For sure. So the other things we're going to use today, I'm going to show you the Picket Fence products first. Of course, we've got our hello there greeting. And that is what that looks like. I like this a lot. This would also be a fantastic focal point on a four by six, four by six, an A2 card, a four and a quarter by five and a half card with some littler butterflies maybe, which do come in these as well. We're also going to use the layering flora. That's where all of our leaves are coming from. We are going to use, this is the rectangle die I used, which you can see it a little bit better on the lighter card. Uh, it's got some stitching around it, but it comes in this set. Let me show you the whole set. Because what I love, you get lots of sizes and you get this awesome hello. I opted not to use it because I wanted to use hello there, but this is a fantastic die. So you could just switch that out super easy. We are going to be using, let's grab the butterfly sets because those really are kind of the show stoppers, I think. Where do you suppose the actual dies? Oh, there they are. I kind of got some packaging happening here. Let's get rid of that. All right. So let's break these into the two butterflies. I believe there's three different ones. I've got two of them here. So we have the layered flit and the layered wander. And this is the die set that works with this one. So it ha there's a stencil you can get and then the dies. And of course the big die comes with this, but you get all the little dies plus some words. So that's where I'm saying the little butterflies would make a very cute card maybe to even adorn just around a big greeting. I always like some good butterflies. And then again, we have our other one here, which is the layered flit. The big butterfly comes with this and then you get the other style and some other greetings with that one. So lots of picket fence. Um, the background, we're of course going to spray, but we are going to stencil with paste. And this is um, the lot, a whole lot of polka dots is what it's called. It's a six by eight stencil, meaning you can use this with your A2 stencils. I love a good polka dot and this is a good one. I really, really like this stencil. Um, so we're gonna be using that. And finally, I did pull in for my finished card, a small sentiment strip, you know, I, I looked at my card, I had it almost all the way done, and I felt like it needed a little sentiment strip. So I picked the Simon Says Stamp Friend Greetings Sending Happy Thoughts, and we're just going to make a little sentiment strip there to add on to the uh, bottom. Neva says, more butterflies, the Jazz Hands Consultant has been making his rounds. <laughs> Isn't that true? It's so, so funny that you see uh, a lot of you know, the same, not same necessarily, but trends. That's the word I'm looking for, trends. Yes, so fun. Oh, Chrislyn has a good point for everyone. Sign up for Picket Fence Text Sales because they are awesome. And they really do have some very good sales. That's a great point. Thank you for sharing that. And let's see, yes, and Karen says always use press and seal on top of your open glazes. Um, that is a good point, I never do it. That's probably why mine dry out, but I don't do it with these and they don't dry out, so. But d that's just me, uh, use press and seal <laughs> if you don't wanna run the risk. <laughs> Liz says she needs to add press and seal to her craft room. Okay, so we have a lot to do. I am gonna go ahead and we're gonna move these guys out of the way. And we're going to start with our backgrounds so that we have 
plenty of dry time. Oh, we, okay, good. So I have already die cut my five by seven background. And I did use the background that is five by seven sized. So it's going to be big. You could do it a little smaller if you want it to have more of a border, but these are gonna completely fill the front of the card front. And then I am going to be super fast and not ink blend, but use some Distress Spray Stains. Um, it is so fast. Shari says my press and seal is so old and only use it for crafting. That's funny. We're going to be using Uncharted Mariner and Speckled Egg. And I am going to actually start with Uncharted Mariner. And I want to show you on the finished cards. I, I'm doing this a little backwards from how I designed these. I'd actually done my butterflies first, and I did my butterflies in similar but different, similar but one's darker than the other, I guess I should say. And when I laid out my butterflies on the backgrounds, I had done the light background first, or for both. This butterfly did not show up on the light background. So the great thing is, is I just put it back in my spray box and I made it darker. And it makes the light butterfly really pop. So we're going to do them both at the same time, but I did want to explain kind of how I came to uh, having two different backgrounds with the same colors. Um, we're going to start with Uncharted Mariner since I have the benefit of, done, of having done this once. And on one of these, I'm going to go light. On the other, even though they're right next to each other, we're just going to go a little darker. And then we're going to take speckled egg. And I am going to fill in some of those lighter areas. And then we're going to go heavy on the more white background. And that's it. Super messy, super fast and easy. And we've got some colored backgrounds. So I'm going to go ahead and move these over here to lay and dry for a minute. While we have our splatter box, I want to talk about our greenery. Let's see, Shari says, if it has frozen images from the first movie from... Oh my gosh, Shari, how do you have press and seal from that long ago? Wow! I colored in my greenery with mica stains. So I have a lot of different kind of ink products going on here. I die cut all of these from white cardstock and we're gonna go ahead and spray those now since we have our box handy. So I've got these already die cut. And it really doesn't matter what color you do. I'm just gonna grab some. And I have Wicked Elixir and Fresh Balsam. And if you haven't found or noticed, these are available individually now. So instead of having to buy the whole trio, like if you ran out of one of your favorite colors, you can now just purchase them individually, which is so good because I have a few that I actually had to purchase another trio of them because I'd run out of my favorite colors. So now I can just replace, and we all can just replace our favorites or our most often used. Cassie and Shari, you guys are on Team Stitcher with me. We're going to stitch on all the things, right? <laughs> with the mica stains, and these I've already mixed up pretty good, usually they get light when they've sat, meaning all of the mica flakes have settled at the bottom, and you want to make sure that you mix these up, and you can hear the balls rolling around in here, mixing them up. So you don't pull those mic or mica flakes up into the sprayer when you go to spray your product. So I'm going to start with Wicked Elixir, which is the more grass green, I would say, of the two. Obviously, it has a Halloween name, but that's okay. It works for all of the things. And then we're going to take Fresh Balsam to some of the others. It's just the fastest way to add color. And then I even kind of spritz, spritz, add a two-tone there. 
Now I find that these dry quicker outside the box, so I use tweezers and we're just gonna lay them here on my working self-healing mat to dry. That way they're not sitting in the liquid and, you know, not drying. I do have some extras, but just in case I, when we get to finishing the card, I want to finish with some of these, I want them to be dry. Okay, we're going to move our splatter box out of the way. Liz says, I love all the crafts. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see. Shari says, I may have done some stitching on cards too. Yes. <laughs> Laura says, hashtag team all of the crafts. I like it for sure. Okay, so with the magic of camera, a video, much better than uh, last week. <laughs> I've got some backgrounds. Please, I did get some green um, on these because I used a splatter box after I had used the green, but I decided I don't care. It's okay. It's going to be all right. We are going to take the, our whole lot of polka dots. Let's just use one at a time. These backgrounds are dry, by the way. That's what I meant by magic. I've These have already dried. We're going to take our whole lot of polka dots and our Huckleberry Blue. And I'm just going to grab a palette knife. And I do want to share here. You might notice I didn't go all over coverage. I did more of the messy distress. I felt it matched the theme of my spray backgrounds better. But you could also just go full on and cover the whole background with your design, in this case, the polka dots. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit, kind of like frosting, that's what I always think of anyway. And I'm just going to kind of be messy about it. And we're going to go all over this and we're going to do both of them. If you caught last week's live or the replay, you may notice that I had to disappear a couple times to go dump things in hot soapy water. I'm going to be doing that again today because I got my stencils all the way clean last week. Oh, look at that. Isn't that fun? I love it. So we're just going to move that one out of the way. And we're going to move this one and do the same thing. And just a tiny little bit's really all of you need. I think the green is right there, so we're just going to make sure we add some blue. And I am scraping a lot of this off. I want a very light, not light application, thin application. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, that looks good. And there is our other background, just like that. Bye, Shari. Thanks for popping in for a little bit. Oh, thank you. I, Judy, I'm so glad the plastic box works for you. It's completely random. It's not even a real product. Okay, let me go dump this in the water. Talk amongst yourselves. and you got to move, buddy. All right, I'm back. I do want to mention one thing about my soapy... I am just put it in my kitchen sink, soapy, wa soapy water in my kitchen sink, and then I come back and clean it later. It works great. Yesterday, I let it sit for like an hour before I came back, and I scrubbed them, and they came completely clean, as you could see, since I used it. So let's move that guy out of the way. And... Let's go ahead and clean this real fast before it sets up. 
Oh, sh Shauna says my six-month-old grandson is completely watching this. Oh, that's hilarious. That's so funny. Okay, I may have to do a real good clean of this later, but we'll get the majority. We'll get the majority off now. Let me try one more time with my microfiber cloth. Also, remember anything you see here, you might have products at home already that you could do something similar. I'm just trying to show maybe how to use glazes that you have, even if they aren't these exact ones, or leaf dyes or butterflies. We probably all have a butterfly, right? At this point. <laughs> I am using regular cardstock, Michelle, for the leaves. I am using 110 pound weight uh, Nina cardstock. Here's some dry ones. I'll show you real quick. Um, and I find it works fine, but if you are worried, use some watercolor cardstock. All right, next up, we are gonna do some stenciling. And we are going to stencil our butterflies. And again, I'm using two different ones. I wanted to try both of them. We're gonna stencil, die cut, and then we're going to add paste. But we are going to stencil envelopes at the same time. So I'm going to grab out a couple of those. Simon Says Stamp has some A7 white envelopes. And I love, I love creating coordinating envelopes. So we're just gonna grab those. And let's grab our first stencil. This is the Flit Butterfly. Um, I did get something on this. I have no idea what it was. This scrubber I was using had something on it. I did want to mention that because um, it came completely clean and then the corner of my scrubber, I can't get this off. It's stained. It's not ruined. It's fine. You know, it happens. I guess is where I'm going with that. So for this butterfly, we're going to use iced spruce and uncharted mariner. Let me grab my blending tools. I guess I forgot to get them out. We're gonna start with iced spruce. And I'm gonna use my blending brush and I am using the oxides. You could use regular what or what any ink that you want. I opted to do my inking before die cutting for this first, um, for the ink blending. Pardon me, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Because I find it easier to not, you know, accidentally tear the antennae or anything like that. Next, we're going to take some Uncharted Mariner and I'm just going to add that kind of in the center of my butterfly body and gently blend that out into the wings. And then I'm gonna take a little bit and we're gonna go over here. So not covering up the iced spruce, but more just kind of giving a really pretty uh, dimension, I guess, to our butterfly before we ever go to adding our paper glaze. Sandy, you're welcome. We don't all have to buy new things. My goal with this is always, always to just maybe show you how to do something fun or it might inspire you. I know when I watch videos, it inspires me. I'm like, what do I have that I could do something similar with or maybe just a part of the card. It doesn't even have to be the whole thing. Okay, so actually let's hold on to this one and let's grab our envelope. 
And what I want to do, and the reason I'm doing it now, is because I'm going to make this stencil messy because it's two part. I guess I could cut it apart, but I'm not going to. Um, we're going to go ahead and stencil our butterfly. I love coordinating envelopes. Do you guys make coordinating envelopes? I love it. I think I missed what a conspiracy is, Tremont. <laughs> That's funny. Rebecca says Uncharted Mariner has been one of her favorite new colors. Isn't it? It is just the most beautiful blue. Okay, I do need to be a little more careful with my butterfly here because I'm not die cutting him. So I really don't want to get outside my stenciling. Or stenciling. The stencil. And I like it to hang off the side. And then we're just going to go in with Uncharted Mariner. Now the difference between our envelope and our butterfly for our card is I don't want to use paste on the envelope. So we're going to just go like this. Move this guy right on over. And we are going to take the Uncharted Mariner and add that detail. And our, we're going to have a matching envelope super fast. Isn't that pretty? So even if you don't want to use pastes because they are kind of messy, look how pretty it is just with inks absolutely love it. Jennifer says, not so much for the envelope since most of my cards take two hours. Most of mine do too. Um, but my envelopes always take not very, very much time. That's why I've started doing it. <laughs> okay. I am going to just do a quick wipe of my stencil. It doesn't have to be super clean. And we're going to just set that aside for a second. And let's grab our other one. And we're going to do that one here on the bottom half. This time I'm going to use Uncharted Mariner and Ground Espresso. Just for something different. Oh, that made a terrible sound. So sorry, everybody. Jennifer wants to know who is going to Simon Says Stamp Create. So if you're going, drop her, let her know in the comments. Oops, hope I didn't mess up my butterfly. We're going to do a nice base of Uncharted Mariner. I probably should take, you know what, I'm going to. There we go. That might help me. Should have done that in the first place. So just like the first butterfly, just a little bit different style. And then we're going to take ground espresso. Which sounds like it wouldn't work, but I kind of love it. <laughs> um, I like how it just kind of grunges it up a little. Don't really like that though. There we go. And then we're going to go around the edges. Let's see. Jennifer says it's going to be her first time. Karen is going. Awesome. guys will have a great time. All right, so just like before, and I did have a little bit of overage here when I shifted my stencil, I can fix that um, with the die cutting. So I'm not going to worry about it. Let's just move this aside and make our envelope, and then we'll die cut our butterflies. Okay. 
And if you really don't want to worry about overage, you can always kind of mask off a little bit. Maybe I should do that. The grunge was why when I first saw this, I thought you used a Tim Holtz die. Yes, definitely uh, has the Tim Holtz vibe, doesn't it? Kate is going first trip for a long time. Awesome. And exactly the same thing. I'm going to probably use just a slightly lighter hand here because I need to add that detailing on the top. All right. Oh, so pretty. And again, we're just going to line up our butterfly. And we'll go in and add some detail. I just heard an alarm go off. Ethan is home from school, though, so he must have set an alarm. <laughs> kind of freaked me out. Neva says, I thought SSAT was a test since we were talking about whiteboards. I don't know what SSAT is either. <laughs> I, I see you guys saying it, but I have no idea what it is. What is it? You guys are going to have to tell me because I have zero idea. Hello, if you're just joining. Okay, look at the envelopes. Super, super fast. Perfectly matches. Oh, I'm so excited about that. I love it. Okay, again, I'm just going to wipe this off a little bit. I don't think it's really going to matter because we're doing a brown paste. And I am going to grab my die cutting machine. So we have our butterflies. I'm going to grab the coordinating dies for both. Oh, you know, guys, I completely forgot to tell you something when I was showing you the products that I think is very useful. The butterfly stencil comes with masks. So let's say that you stencil this on your card and then maybe you want to create a one layer background, you could put this in place, spray over it, bl ink blend over it, whatever you want to do. The mask, I love that the stencil comes with a mask and they all have that. So just another bonus, I'm not using that part obviously today, but a great little uh, bonus, I think. Stamp Scrap Art Tour. Oh, fun. Okay, thank you guys for letting me know. I had no idea what that was. Oh, it's the Simon Says Stamp Weekend, Nevis? Okay. Had no idea. <laughs> That's funny. And we are just going to... I'm going to do them one at a time because I still haven't bought new cutting plates. I know... You guys are like, what is wrong with you? It's so many things. I just keep forgetting to order them, and then I go to die cut every day, and I'm so mad. Hello, Susan! How are you? And butterfly. Okay, let's go ahead and do our other one. I love the size of these. These are a really fun product. Uh, another idea, several months ago, I did some butterfly, butterfly, butterfly canvas art. I think these butterflies would be beautiful. Could kind of be done in a little bit different way, but I think they would make fantastic like art or decor projects.
Liz, thank you so much. I think they do too. Oh, good. I'm so glad you're good. And we have our butterflies. So now let's do some fun glaze over the top of these pretties. We're gonna go back with our stencils and I die cut these first because you do not want to try to die cut after you added the glaze. So this one goes with this butterfly and to kind of match the vibe, we are gonna be using some of the coffee beans. And this has a little bit, I don't know if you can see, it has some like little glittery gold flakes in it. It's really pretty. Oh, I probably don't need that much. Um, and we are gonna just simply add this to our butterfly. And again, I'm trying to use a pretty light, or not light, thin coat so that it dries quick. So you get the beautiful result and the texture, but you're not waiting three hours for it to dry. And look at that. What it's going to look like is this when it's dry. I just love it. I love the texture and I love the detail. All right, before I go dump this in water, let's go ahead and do our other one and we're gonna use Spanish moss. Amy, you are up early. Aloha. And we are going to use our other stencil with the Spanish moss, which is, I know I say this all the time, it's my favorite. It's like iced spruce to me. And we are going to do the same thing. And we're gonna go ahead And look at that. And when it dries, it's going to look just like this one. You could do any color you want to. If you want more contrast, you could totally do that. So what I was saying about the, the canvas art, I could see doing these in rainbow because my canvas art was in rainbow. Imagine doing these butterflies in rainbow with the texture of the stenciling. Wouldn't that be awesome? So fun. Okay, let me go dump my paste messy things in the water. I'll be right back. If I can give you any tip about paste, just put your tools and stencils in water immediately. You will be glad you did. You don't want to have that stuff caked on. It's such a pain. All right, let me see. Let me grab my dry ones. And let's set these wet ones aside. So again, the magic of video, the magic of video. That's the best thing about doing these videos, you guys, <laughs> is we, we can pretend. Okay, so I've got my backgrounds here that we've stenciled. We've got our butterflies. Our dark one's gonna go on the light. Our light one's gonna go on the dark. And we are gonna take our hello there greetings. And really from this point, it's just putting it all together. So what I did for my greeting is I have die cut the hello there three times. Twice from white card stock and once from gold matte uh, Simon Says Stamp cardstock. I love uh, the silver, the rose gold, the 
the gold I'm using here. Oh my gosh, Judy, that makes me so happy. She said she got the Spellbinders Platinum and it works great and she's so happy. It is a fantastic die cutting machine. It's what I have. You just need to replace your cutting plates or flatten them. I flattened them all, they're gonna flatten. They are not flattening anymore, I need new ones. But yes, it is a great machine. I'm so glad you're happy, that makes me happy. So we're gonna glue our white layers together, one on top of another. I have found, especially with these kind of mirrored card stocks or metallic card, uh, card stocks, they're a little thinner. Um, even if I wasn't going to do the little offset shadow that I did on these, I think I would still probably go ahead. It gives it a little bit more of a substantial look if you go ahead and put it on um, at least one other layer. You could do as many as you want to pop it up, but even if you wanted to pop it up, foam is going to be, you won't be able to get foam back behind here. So just die cut a few extras from scrap cardstock and really if you're going to put them right on top of each other, it could be any color. Oh, Cheryl, I'm so glad that you're here. So glad you're getting to catch a live. All right, we're just gonna slightly offset it so it has a little white shadow. And then I'm actually going to set this aside with an acrylic block on top to hold it flat. And with the magic of video, I already have some. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of magic of video moments today. Try to make it go a little smoother than it did last week when I didn't have enough dry time. So we're gonna put glue on the back of our greetings. And what I did was I took my butterfly and I kind of figured out where do I want my butterfly and then where do I want my greeting so that it all kind of flows together. So that looks pretty good. And we're gonna go ahead and attach our butterfly. I'm gonna put foam squares. These are my favorite Simon Says Stamp foam squares. Underneath the wings, out away from the body. Oh, Patty, thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Judy goes, I had purchased it because you had to. <laughs> and we're going to put liquid glue in the body. So this is my little tip for making the wings look like they're, well, this card, it needs to be attached. Probably doesn't show that great there. But I like to kind of do this so it looks like the butterfly is in motion. We're just going to add or push down, pardon me, the glue in the center. And then just like that. Let's go ahead and do this one. I've got another greeting all prepped and ready to go. You guys know my philosophy. If I have all my stuff out, I might as well make more than one card. And the great thing about prepping these cards for the live is I'm going to have six cards. That's okay too. Lots of cards. The more the better. We're going to do the same thing. And add a little glue in the body. How do you flatten your plates, Tanya says. Um, Jennifer McGuire has a video. I will say it doesn't work great for me. <laughs> I've done it and it's okay. It works in a pinch, but I've not had the best of luck. I usually just buy new ones. I use my, my, my cutting plates enough that I just buy new ones. So I'm not mad. And my son can attest to that because he heard me cussing at them <laughs> when I was die cutting all of this stuff. Magic moments. Shimon, I do need a magic wand for special effects moments. Wouldn't that be fun? 
We're going to take all of our mica stained greenery from earlier and we're going to make pretty little flower, flower, not flower, greenery arrangements. I love these. I think they add a lot to not only the finished design here, but I think they would work really well for a lot of different cards. Um, let's go ahead and add some to our other card too. Oh, maybe not. Let's add this one here. I forgot I have so many greenery pieces. I wanted to make sure I had plenty. So we are going to Deb, that is true. I will say that that technique does clean all of the gunk off of your plates. So if you're getting like a lot of, um, you just know, you know, all of the little paper stuff that comes off when you die cut, it does very much help with that. Oh, thank you, Krista. And we're just going to build some little greenery here however you want because I will actually since I've had all of these magic moments for the magic wand that you guys were mentioning <laughs> I will need to put together a couple more cards when we're finished which is great I have all of the components already, which is fantastic. So I'm just putting some greenery in a couple places and to me, it really balances out the design nicely. There we go. Oh, I think I need to add one more thing down here. Let's add this. All right. That looks good. From that Simon Says Stamp stamp set, and this is the Friend Greetings. I already have a bunch of sentiment strips, and I already have them prepped with a little foam. And we are gonna use the magic tool called the T-square ruler to help us line up our greetings perfectly. I love this thing. It's gonna help you get your sentiment strip perfectly straight the first time. Deb, thank you. That means a lot to me. This is my favorite way to end the week by far. I love visiting with you guys. And we're gonna use our T-square ruler over here. And the last thing we're gonna do is add some embellishment. Neva, yes, you have to have a sense of humor. You have to have a sense of humor if you're you're here in my community. <laughs> I try to to keep it, you know, we want to keep it a nice, friendly place, a happy place. All right, so I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. We're just going to add some little pearls. And these are, I should have looked at the name before I opened them. The Trinity Stamps Vintage Lace is what we're using. I wanted something that would stand out from the background. So I didn't really want to go tone on tone. And I thought these pearls just kind of added that, that fun, elegant look. But I like how they add just a little, a little something to our card. But sometimes it's a trick getting them to go the right direction. Oh, come on. Flip over, man. Or not. Oh, 
There we go. Let's get some little ones. Nope. And let's go ahead and do this one. Oh, Trina, thank you. Sandy, it is a happy place. Thank you guys. That means the world to me. I think there's enough ugliness out there. So this is a fun, happy place. That is what crafting is for me. It's a nice little escape, isn't it? Plus, it makes you happy. For sure. Oh my goodness. What kind of pin is that? Supernova asks. If you're asking about this, it's an embellishment wand and it's from Studio Katcha. Katcha? I probably said that wrong. I probably butchered it. I usually add it in the supplies if I didn't. I will be fixing that when I fix the color of. Ma uh, moss. I use Spanish moss when I fix the color of glaze that I used. So um, if I didn't add it, it is my favorite tool and I buy new tips for it and just replace them when they wear out. Thank you so much. So we're going to put these in here and I'm sure you guys can guess what's coming next. Every card, well, 99% of Nicole's cards need a heart, right? <laughs> Donna, that's awesome. I'm so glad. It's the best way to start my day, too, for sure. I love chatting with you guys. We are going to add some cute little clear hearts. I felt like clear matched these cards the best, but whatever color to match your cards... And the glue will dry clear so it won't have that kind of muddy look underneath. There we go. And that is it. Big, bold, stenciled butterflies. Lots of texture. I am going to just touch these since they're all the way dry. Um, but the texture of the background, the texture on the butterflies, and then just all of the pretty mica stains and all of the little kind of glittery look in those pastes are super fun. And then when I do have these on card bases because they're not yet, look how pretty that is with the matching envelope. I just, I don't know what it is, but I love the matching envelopes. And here's this one. It does look like a dew drop. Cassie noticed the hearts on the finished cards already. I knew Cassie would notice. <laughs> and there we go. Okay, you guys, did I miss any of your questions? Let me go into the chat here really quick. And let me flip my camera around too. Okay, I need to end our poll. It looks like about 19% mostly create... Uh, Five by seven, 60 said sometimes, and 21% said not at all. And remember, anything I did here, you could totally do on an A2 card. Just maybe, you know, leave off a few things. Yes, the chatting is so much fun live. Oh, thank you guys so much. I'm glad um, 42, is it Rosie? Rosie, Rosie <laughs> says she loves the matching envelopes. I love that. What color bases will you use? I will use white card bases. Yep. And I actually have to cut a couple. That is, the, I have a bunch of pre-cut A2 card bases and slimline card bases. I buy the card bases from Simon Says Stamp. Um, so I don't have the 5x7s, and so I'm going to have to cut some. That's why they're not on card bases already. I'm going to do that all at once for all of my cards. Woohoo! Neva says she's a 19 percenter. <laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. 
Do you ever feel like it's a waste doing envelopes when most people throw them away? Cheryl said, no, I don't. Uh, in fact, I expect you to throw them away. I don't spend tons of time on them uh, for the most part. I've done a few where I've spent a little bit more time, but I it doesn't bother me at all. I think the presentation, um, I don't keep wrapping paper either, but I love a beautiful presentation. And these just took, you saw, just a couple minutes to create the envelope. So I don't mind, especially... I feel like stenciling is, is one of those things, especially it only takes a couple minutes. It doesn't really use up anything. And so I don't mind doing that. Question, Laura said, do you seal the envelopes as you've used water reactive inks? You know what? No, I don't worry about it. You could if you do, uh, but I, I just don't worry about it. Kathleen says, my postman loves decorated envelopes. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Judy. That's so sweet of you. Do you bring cards to the post office to mail to make sure you have the correct postage? Um, no, I don't. I have, um, I have a scale, and so I do mine at home. But I could. I, I just don't normally. Karen loves pretty envelopes. Oh, thank you so much, Reese. That's so nice of you. Do you make top or side fold five by seven cards? I will make side fold five by seven cards. Um, I wish, but I don't have paper. I don't think I have paper big enough for a top fold. Let's see. <laughs> Judy says, can't wait to make these. Simon says, stamp, please uh, send my order ASAP. I, they'll do their best, I'm sure. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, I know I said I don't seal them. You probably could do that really easily with a with a sealant. So I don't worry about it. But if you if you do worry about it, then definitely seal them. I like that. Donna says she thinks um, she figures that it makes the post office worker smile seeing the decorated envelopes. I hope so. I hope we do. Oh, Cheryl is a retired letter carrier and she likes the envelopes also. Well, that is amazing, Cheryl. How awesome. Liz says, are the scales expensive? Uh, I don't remember. I've had mine for eight or nine years. I've had it a long time. I, so I'm not sure how much it was. For me, it was worth it I because I had a lot of packages and things and I just don't like waiting in line. I, You can go. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows this. You can go to usps.com and you can order priority mail boxes free. The post office will deliver them. You can, you know, package them up. I print my labels at home and then I have them, the letter carrier pick them up at my house for the most part. I do take them to the post office sometimes now, uh, but for the most part, I just request a, a carrier pickup when they deliver my mail and they pick them up. So I never have to really go to the post office. <laughs> Goals. <laughs> Oh, Deb says Christina Warner seals her envelopes with micro microglaze. Is that right? Um, and she would be the one to know because she does beautiful decorated envelopes. That is awesome. Yep, keeping the USPS in business. I try. I try real hard. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And just I just want to reiterate that because I just found the comment again. Christina Warner seals her envelopes with microglaze. So if you're worried about that, that is a fantastic tip. Thank you, Deb, for letting us know that in the chat. Uh, Melissa wants to say that you can use an inexpensive food scale uh, to, for weighing your envelopes. I will say, so the reason I have a scale is because sometimes I have really heavy boxes and I needed a scale that would do that. Before that, I used a food scale. So thank you, Melissa, for sharing that too. Oh, Sandy, that's a big bummer. I would be complaining too. Neva, I agree. My handwriting is not as good as it used to be at all. Jennifer says, don't go over your postage stamp with microglaze. Absolutely.
Yes, I like that. Um, 42 Rosie Rosie says that she's gotten compliments on envelopes, um, even with a tiny stamped image in the bottom corner. They don't have to be extravagant to make someone smile, for sure. I love that. That is awesome. Did I miss anybody's questions during the live? Let me know. I'm going to hang out for a minute more, so I just want to make sure. Nikki, thank you so much. That's so nice of you. You made my day. Thank you. Oh, good. Um, is it Ramos? She says she is a male uh, woman and she loves to see decorated envelopes or pretty postcards or something to brighten her day. And she's sad she missed the live stream. Well, the replay will be available. Thank you for popping in and saying hello. Let's see. <laughs> Shaman, yeah. Don't forget to, re to reorder cutting plates. I have cutting plates I need to get today. I need to get in more A2 envelopes today. And I feel like there's something else. I, I made a list. I made a list and it's right by my desktop computer in my other room in my office. So um, yeah, I, I'm going to be doing all of that. Ashley says, have a great weekend. Happy stitching. Absolutely. Thank you. And happy weekend, Cassie says, and go Chiefs. Yes. So I live in Kansas, so we're, we're going go Chiefs. At least I am. Some of my family's not Chiefs fans, so, you know, whatever. I'm not the biggest football fan. I, I think I said this in another video, so I don't care that much. Um, but I am making the food, so <laughs> the food will be good. <laughs> the food, and my daughter got a puppy, and she's bringing him. And I've already met him, but he's, he's like tiny. <laughs> He's so tiny. He's less than two pounds right now, uh, but he's adorable. So she's bringing him, so I'm sure I'll play with the puppy. Yes, now I have to get the ice spruce ink. The ice spruce is my favorite. Definitely get the ice spruce. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, um, as you're watching the replay, drop them in the comments, and I will get to them. I appreciate all of you so, so much. I will see you guys all next Friday. Just a little heads up. There's a new release from Simon Says Stamp coming. So you are going to be seeing um, a little live video with new products from the release. I'm really excited about that. I did see Neva asked what breed. He's a Shizu, but he's going to be tiny. <laughs> Super tiny. Um, so have a wonderful, wonderful week. I will see all of you next Friday for card making. My stitchers, I'll see you guys Monday night if you're going to participate with the sal or even if you just want to come chat with us. Uh, see you guys later and uh, have a great weekend. Bye. The supplies used in today's video are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another project that you might be interested in. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to never miss a new live video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.